Ever wondered why we study trigonometry and where it applies in our daily life? Well, let's delve into it. Trigonometry, a fascinating branch of mathematics, is all about the relationships between the sides and angles of triangles. It's like the secret language of geometry, giving us the tools to decode the mysteries of shapes and patterns. It's a bit like being a detective, but instead of solving crimes, we're solving puzzles in the world of numbers and shapes. Now you might be thinking, that's all well and good, but when would I ever need to use this in the real world? The answer is, more often than you might think. Trigonometry is like the backbone of many fields of study. Physics, engineering, astronomy, you name it, and trigonometry probably has a hand in it. Imagine you're an engineer designing a new bridge. You'd need to calculate the precise angles and lengths to ensure it's safe and stable. Or maybe you're a physicist trying to understand the path of a light wave. You'd use trigonometry to model the wave and predict its behavior. Even in our daily life, if you've ever used a map or a GPS to find your way, you've indirectly used trigonometry. Understanding waves, determining distances and angles, even making sense of the rhythms of the cosmos, all these involve trigonometry. It's not just an abstract concept confined to textbooks. It's a powerful tool that helps us navigate the complexities of the world around us. It's fascinating to think that trigonometry, with its roots deep in ancient civilizations like the Greeks and Egyptians, continues to be so relevant today. They used it for navigation, astronomy, and now, we use it to design buildings, analyze scientific data, and so much more. So it seems trigonometry is not just about abstract concepts, but it plays a significant role in our everyday life. It's like a hidden superpower waiting to be discovered and mastered, and the more we understand it, the more we can use it to unlock the secrets of the world around us. Now that we understand why we need trigonometry, let's delve into its basic concepts. The heart of trigonometry beats with three main functions, sine, cosine, and tangent. These three are the maestros conducting the symphony of triangles. To appreciate their music, we need to understand how they relate to the sides and angles of a triangle. Let's start with the sine function, often abbreviated as sin. Imagine a right-angled triangle. The sine of an angle in this triangle is the length of the side opposite the angle divided by the length of the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse, if you remember, is the longest side of a right-angled triangle, the one opposite the right angle. Next up, we have the cosine function, or cos for short. This is the length of the adjacent side to the angle divided by the hypotenuse. The adjacent side is the one next to the angle you're considering, but it's not the hypotenuse. Lastly, we have the tangent function, often shortened to tan. This is the sine of an angle divided by its cosine, or in other words, it's the length of the side opposite the angle divided by the length of the adjacent side. These functions are like the keys on a piano. Alone, they can create notes, but together they compose beautiful melodies. In the context of a triangle, they allow us to uncover the hidden relationships between its angles and sides. Now, let's consider a concrete example. Picture a right-angled triangle where one of the angles is 30 degrees. The sine of 30 degrees is one half. This means that if the hypotenuse is two units long, the side opposite the 30 degree angle would be one unit long. Similarly, the cosine of 30 degrees is approximately 0.87. So the adjacent side would be roughly 1.74 units long if the hypotenuse is two units. Then there's the tangent of 30 degrees, which is approximately 0.58. This implies that the side opposite the 30 degree angle is just over half the length of the adjacent side. These examples illustrate how sine, cosine, and tangent give us a way to talk about and calculate the lengths of sides in a triangle based on its angles, and vice versa. And that's the magic of these functions. They create a bridge between the angles and sides of a triangle, allowing us to navigate from one to the other with ease. These three functions form the basis of trigonometry, and understanding them is crucial to mastering this branch of mathematics. You may be wondering, how do these trigonometric functions work in a cycle? Well, let's dive in. Like a well-orchestrated symphony, a trigonometric cycle is a beautiful dance of mathematical relationships. Here, sine, cosine, and tangent take center stage, their values changing rhythmically as we progress around a circle or cycle. Imagine a line rotating around a fixed point, creating angles with the horizontal axis. As this line sweeps out an angle, it's like the hand of a clock ticking around the face. This is our cycle and our trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, are the musicians of this symphony, each playing their own unique part. The sine function, for instance, represents the vertical position of our rotating line. 
As the angle increases, the height of our line above the horizontal axis increases, reaches a peak, and then decreases back down. This is mirrored on the other side of the axis, creating a recurring wave-like pattern or cycle. The cosine function, on the other hand, represents the horizontal position. It moves in sync with the sine function, but starts from a different point. When the sine function is at its peak, the cosine function is at its lowest point, and vice versa. The two functions are like dancers, moving in a harmonious yet contrasting pattern. The tangent function is a bit of a wild card. It's the ratio of the sine to the cosine and its values can swing wildly from positive to negative infinity. But despite its seemingly chaotic nature, it too follows a predictable cycle. As we move around our cycle, these functions create patterns, rhythms that repeat over and over. This cyclical nature is the heart and soul of trigonometry, breathing life into what might otherwise be a static, unchanging field of study. So, as we move from 0 to 360 degrees, or from 0 to 2 pi radians, we experience the full range of trigonometric values. Their relationships, their patterns, their cycles, all unfold before our eyes, a mathematical ballet of sorts. And that, in essence, is the fascinating cycle of trigonometry. But trigonometry doesn't stop here. There are also the identities. Let's dive into the fascinating world of trigonometric identities. These are equations that involve trigonometric functions and are true for every single value of the variable where both sides of the equation are defined. They are the backbone of trigonometry, connecting its many branches and concepts together in one harmonious dance. Imagine identities as the secret sauce that allows us to express one trigonometric function in terms of others. This way, they help us simplify complex equations and make them more manageable. They're like the translators of the trigonometric world, helping different functions communicate and relate to each other. Among the most common trigonometric identities are the reciprocal identities, the quotient identities, and the Pythagorean identities. Each of these plays a unique role in connecting different trigonometric functions and making our mathematical lives a whole lot easier. The reciprocal identities, for example, tell us that the cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine, the second is the reciprocal of the cosine, and the cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent. Then we have the quotient identities, which express the tangent and cotangent functions in terms of sine and cosine. For example, the tangent of an angle equals the sine of that angle divided by its cosine. And of course, who can forget the Pythagorean identities? Stemming from the Pythagorean theorem, these identities form the basis of so much of what we do in trigonometry. They state that the square of the sine plus the square of the cosine of an angle always equals 1. These identities are not just theoretical constructs, they have practical applications in fields as diverse as physics, engineering, computer science, and more. They allow us to solve complex problems, design intricate structures, and understand the world around us in a deeper way. In essence, trigonometric identities are like a secret language, a code that, once deciphered, reveals the true beauty of trigonometry. So let's embrace them, let's understand them, and let's use them to unlock the full potential of trigonometry. These identities are the magic keys that unlock the full potential of trigonometry. Let's take a moment to reflect on what we've learned today. We've delved into the fascinating world of trigonometry, a branch of mathematics that examines the intricate relationships between the sides and angles of triangles. We've touched on its importance in a multitude of fields, from physics to engineering and even in our daily lives. We've unraveled the basic concepts of trigonometry, introducing you to the sine, cosine, and tangent functions, the cornerstones of this discipline. We journeyed together through the trigonometric cycle, a beautiful dance of numbers and angles. And finally, we explored the intriguing trigonometric identities the equations that interconnect these functions in ways that are both complex and wonderfully elegant. Remember, learning trigonometry is not just about solving triangles, it's about understanding the beautiful relationships that govern our world. So keep exploring, keep learning,